right, what's going on with y'all? Let's get this thing popping real quick. How y'all living? Hold on one second, let me check on a few things. I'm still out here in the wilderness. These, these mosquitoes are lighting my ass up out here. How y'all living, guys? I'm sure I'm live like I'm supposed to be here. Hold on, bear with me one second. All right, how y'all doing, man? Y'all come on in the room. All right, what's going on with y'all? I hope I ain't muffling my mic here. Let's get this thing popping real quick. All right, what's up, man? Let me let everybody know on the gram that I'm live right now. Well, these mosquitoes are lighting a nigga up, man. How y'all doing, man? Everybody come on in the room while I, I do my thing. We just gonna chop it up just for a little taste. Just a little bit while I'm here. Let me let the gram know that I'm live. Hold on. I got on all types of mosquito repellent right now, guys. And this mosquito repellent ain't doing nothing. The mosquitoes are eating through that right now, man. They eat me like that mosquito repellent is Nutella. That ain't nothing but flavoring and seasoning for these damn mosquitoes. Costa Rica is cool. It's my last day here. It's my last day here, so I'm chilling, doing my thing. Let me let people on Twitter know that I'm live. How about I do that real quick? How about I do that real quick? And you know what, while I do that, let me do, a, let's throw a real quick commercial break in here. Let's get a commercial going on, ladies and gentlemen. A video commercial. I can't do my regular ad spots, but we'll, we'll do a, let's do a couple of video commercials here. I'll be right back. Hold on. play okay I guess that didn't work hold on come on commercial ad come on all right come on you're supposed to be playing all right are you looking for an affordable COVID-19 DNA testing or infectious disease clinical testing welcome to p23 labs a high-complexity molecular diagnostics lab that uses the latest technology to offer a full suite of molecular diagnostic tests, clinical tests, and wellness consultations. We give you access to knowledge and healthcare resources that will transform your health. Schedule an appointment and order your custom test today with our healthcare team. www.p23labs.com We ain't done. We got another commercial for you. It's a little janky the way we doing this thing, but hold on. Here we go. Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us Need Software to 213-640-9738. That's 213-640-9738. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. Right, ladies and gentlemen that's what it is all right all right so we're back we're back ladies and gentlemen we are back and uh, we're making it do what it do Hold on, let me get all these and uh, I know y'all probably hear music in the background you know they got you know some people singing some Costa Rican karaoke and you know they're performing and they do every night they do these different musical themes and one night they had disney they had like a disney theme which was cool i took the kids you know they were doing aladdin and they were doing all this disney stuff which was cool and the next night they were doing another film theme different film cultural film themes all right i took the kids and man it was a bunch of dudes and dresses they were doing a damn drag show basically i'm like okay shit kids are there looking confused and um, um, 
last night they did a Michael Jackson thing and now these are Costa Ricans and these are the people who actually work at the hotel. So these are actually hotel workers who are performing. So they work in, you know, the cafeteria and, you know, concierge in the daytime and at night they be performing their ass off. And you have motherfuckers, you know, one dude, they did a Bruno Mars thing and he was clearly the chef from the buffet earlier. He had ravioli stains on his jacket. Mm -hmm. Uptown Punk gonna give it to you. Uptown Punk gonna give it to you. I mean, if you don't put some more mashed potatoes in that buffet in the morning and stop fucking around, Hector. <laughs> but it's it's jovial. It's a it's a it's a cool experience. I give it that. It's a very interesting experience here. You dig? I will say that, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all come on in this room, man. Y'all come on in here. I need y'all to hit that thumbs up button. I need y'all to hit that like button for a player. All right? I need y'all to hit that thumbs up button. I need y'all to hit that like button. All right? I need y'all to hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button. All right? Because we in here on a Tuesday night, ladies and gentlemen. A few things we're going to chop up game about before I get into the cultural appropriation conversation. Um, I want to say congratulations again to our brother Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon is expecting another baby. Nick Cannon is my brother. I love that brother very dearly. He's a very warm-hearted brother. He's a very good brother. Nick Cannon is a very good, genuine brother. That is our brother, man. We've got a lot of respect and love for Nick Cannon. Um, Nick Cannon, there's a lot of pregnancies and babies going on here. A lot of that. We, we people, we make jokes. I made a joke showing a Popeye's chicken worker worn out saying this is an Amazon worker who's working on his baby registry but um oh, what's going on here hold on wait 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 wait. hold on one second so you know people, people make jokes people make jokes and everything like that but um the thing is what I, I hope he's okay because my dude is having a lot of kids out here and I know my brother Nick has been having um you know he has health issues I think he has lupus, right? My brother has lupus. Okay. I mean, I'm looking because I keep hearing different noises and shit, and I'm in the jungle, so, yo, you know, I don't want a jaguar to creep up on a nigga, so that's why I keep looking. I keep, when I hear something, I'm looking because it's very dark where I am, all right? But, um, yeah, I hope my brother Nick is okay, man. I hope, you know, I hope this ain't no situation where yeah, my man thinks he's about to check out of here and he's trying to have, have as many offspring as possible yeah I hope he's okay that's you know I'm, now I'm getting concerned there's a lot of pregnancies here and you know I hope my dude is okay I just hope my brother is okay I'll say that I'm not gonna put anything bad but I, I hope my brother is okay I hope my brother is okay yeah, yeah, my, I think, yeah, Nick has lupus, man. So my brother, his his health was kind of a little funny style. So, you know, I, I hope my brother's good, you know, with all the kids. And, and Nick, if you need a babysitter, let me holler at me, man. I, the kids can come over and swim at my house, man. It's cool in the game. Oh, man. But, um, yeah, yeah, DMX, yeah, same thing with DMX. DMX had a whole bunch of kids before he um got out of here, man. So, you know. You know, we, we got to check on folks, man. I, you know, we got to make sure our people are cool because we never know what people are going through. We never know. Sometimes certain actions and certain things are, you know, sometimes, not saying they are, but sometimes they can be um, campaigns for help, campaign for people to come and holler at them. So you never know. You never know. So I hope uh, I hope my brother is fine. But, you know, let, let's, let's get into what we're going to talk about. I'm talking about black people, black Americans, Foundation of Black Americans being accused of cultural appropriation, ladies and gentlemen. Actor Michael B. Jordan, he has a rum coming out called Jove. That's the name of it, Jove. I, I think I'm pronouncing it right. And Jove, that's a Caribbean thing, particularly the term 
I think it came out of Caribbean, uh, Trinidadian Creole. It was something, it was kind of a, an amalgamation of a French word, but then it became kind of a Creole thing in Trinidad. So Michael B. Jordan has this rum called Jove. So now he made the announcement that he has this Jove rum coming out and a bunch of people from Trinidad and other cultural Caribbean places, they start crying foul. They start talking about how black Americans be appropriating their culture. Oh, they use that as an excuse to just go in on foundational black Americans. Jove, Juve, okay, Juve, that's why I'm saying Jove, it's Juve, Juve, that's the name of it, Juve. My thing, look, and where, where are the Caribbean people if you're in here? Caribbean people, if you in here, y'all need to get off that bullshit. Y'all are the main ones telling us we shouldn't be talking about we foundational black Americans because we all came on the same boat. We were just dropped off at different time now. We is all black. Now, when it comes to y'all getting all the goodies and benefits that foundational black Americans then sat here and sacrificed and fought for, in the country that foundational black Americans built, when we start talking about what we need to be getting as foundational black Americans, we hold on, that divisive now. Y'all is divisive. We is all in this together. We is black peepers. Y'all the main ones appropriating our culture, appropriating our tax dollars, appropriating the HBCUs, appropriating the slang and the language that we use and create, you appropriate everything and we don't trip on it. But the minute this brother just names a rum, he's not exploiting anybody, he's just naming a rum because rum was popular in the Caribbean. That's where a lot of the, the French and the English, they would distill and get their rum made in the Caribbean during slavery. So a lot of rum distilleries were in the Caribbean. So rum is a Caribbean thing for the most part. So he gave his rum, or whoever he's working with, they gave it a Caribbean name, that's what it is. I, I, I don't respect that, that fake outrage over Michael B. Jordan because really that just facilitates a lot of that anti-foundation of black American um, contempt that a lot of people have, which we've been calling out. You understand? That's really just something an excuse to facilitate the the contempt for FBA that you already have. Because the thing is, y'all sitting up here talking about black America. We don't, we don't appropriate none of, nothing in your culture. We don't. We don't be over there trying to do the shit y'all do. This brother's just using the name, a Creole name, and now y'all want to try to throw all of us under the damn bus? No while you're texting and tweeting from a damn HBCU in Memphis somewhere. But my thing is this, and even, um, hold on, who is this? Shout out to somebody hitting up the Cash App, the Cash App dollar sign KingFlex818. That's the Cash App dollar sign KingFlex818. But my thing is this, Trinidadians in particular, well, the, the Trinidadians in particular, because y'all are real funny style. Some of y'all are very funny style, real. Y'all get around white folks, get the buck in your eyes. Let me tell you something. Y'all are not running around talking about those white people and East Indians and Asians who are over in Trinidad right now, owning all the businesses, appropriating your culture, selling all of your culture, selling all of your products. You're not complaining about them who's running the show over there. The, the, those immigrants from Asia and India, they come over there running the show. Y'all don't say shit. The minute a foundational black American, he's not even over there exploiting anybody. He's just using a name all of a sudden. Oh, well, can't be doing that now. That's who you got the smoke for? See, that's why we ain't doing that Pan-African thing, guys. The Asians are over there running amok as far as running the businesses. And you go to these cultural restaurants that's owned by them over there you ain't speaking out against that and then Nicki Minaj chimed in she was talking about 
he should change the name now that he understands that it's offensive. To, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing. Nikki, because she's Trinidadian. She's a Trinidadian immigrant. She was born there. She immigrated here. Nicki Minaj is an immigrant who has appropriated our culture, by the way. Nicki Minaj has gotten rich off foundational black American culture. And she's talking about it. Now that he understands whatever, he should change the name. Nicki Minaj, hold on, sis. We're going to talk about culture appropriation and respect for culture. Nicki Minaj, just the same Nicki Minaj who goes out of our way to disrespect foundational black American culture. Remember that record she had talking about act like Rosa Parks and get your ass up? Don't you speak about foundational black American culture and who we need to respect when it comes to Trinidadian culture we're supposed to bow down and show respect but you can sit up here and talk about our foundation of black American icons getting their ass up and get out of here stop it no it don't work like that make like Rosa Parks and get your ass up and you're an immigrant talking about a foundation of black American who was one of the people who helped get immigrants like you over here her actions helped get immigrants over here. We can't have that kind of disrespect. That's not cool whatsoever. Hip hop was not founded by Caribbean people. Let's stop that lie. Oh, let's get busy with that. I knew y'all were gonna come in telling that lie. No, it wasn't. No, it was not. Hello. No, it was not. No, it was not. They, they say the godfather of hip hop is um, Cool Herc, but Cool Herc came over here and used all the tools that foundational black Americans already had. Let's be clear. Caribbeans did not found no goddamn hip-hop. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it loud and clear. You did not found hip-hop. Cool Herc came over and used all the tools that were created by foundational black Americans and just kind of put it all together. Graffiti Let's look at all the elements of hip hop. Let's look at, let, let's have this conversation again. We've had this conversation before. Let's have this conversation again. What are all the elements of hip hop? What are the five basic elements? MCing, B boying, beatboxing, graffiti. What's the other one? Um, rapping. Wait, 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 hold on. MCing, no, DJing. Shit, I'm DJing. MCing, graffiti, b-boying, and beatboxing. Those are the five basic elements, okay? Every single one of those elements were created by Foundation of Black Americans. Every single one. Every single one was created by Foundation of Black Americans. Beatboxing is a form of scatting. Skip, skip, the beat, dip, 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 That's a form of scatting. Ella Fitzgerald. All those people did that shit, dude. We've been doing that. You know, Dougie Fresh and all those guys, they started perfecting it a little bit later. But let's look at the b-boying. When, and Cool Herc even talks about this, when he started playing those break beats from funk records that Foundation of Black Americans were creating, the b-boys, the dancers, who were Foundation of Black Americans at first, then the Puerto Ricans started copying them, they were basically doing James Brown moves. Who's the foundation of black American? Graffiti came out of Philly. A dude named Cornbread created modern graffiti as we know it today. You understand? Wait, well, hold on. Wait, wait. My, I, I just got a news flash. Hold on. My dude, Carl the Promoter. Shout out to Carl the Promoter. Hold on. Hold on. My dude, hold on. Hold on. Let me see something. Hold on. My, my man said one of these bedwinches divorced her husband. I don't know. Hold on. Okay. I don't know how true it is. I don't know. My, I just got a one of one of these um, very well known bedwinches who promote bedwinch classes. They said she got she got a divorce from her zaddy. My man Carl the promoter just sent me a link. I, I don't. I haven't had a chance to really look at it, but I'll get into that a little bit later. But like I said, the b-boy dancing, uh, all those breakdance moves, all the MC and rapping. We've been rapping, man. We H rap Brown, Dolomite. That came from Foundational Black Americans. Stop playing with us. Stop goddamn playing. 
hip hop is a foundational black American culture. And we gave props and respect to our brother Cool Herc for putting all of those foundational black American cultures together on his sound system. Okay. Oh yeah, so the did that bedwinch really get divorced from her zaddy? Oh, the, the bedwinches are taking L's right now. The bedwinches are taking major L's right now. Oh, you know, there's a bedwinch. These bedwinches are getting wake-up calls and they're very mad at us. And that brings us to Synthetic G. I, I gotta touch on Synthetic G for a minute. I gotta touch on Synthetic G. Speaking of bedwinches, the Synthetic G. Now, Cynthia, I know you're listening, dear. Let me talk directly to Cynthia. Cynthia, I know you're listening. I'm not going to be on here too long. I'm just going to touch on it for a quick minute. I put a, Cynthia was on her broadcast the other day. And Cynthia, I do not watch your broadcast. I don't, I don't, bro, I don't watch your broadcast. I don't, I don't watch you, dear. You're, you're boring to me. I don't watch you. And plus you're a pathological liar. I don't really listen to pathological liars. But um, anyway, from my understanding... She had a broadcast, and there was a white man on there that she brought on. She brought a zaddy on, and I think my name came. I didn't hear it. I didn't, I'm going to be honest. I didn't listen to it. I just kept hearing the clip notes from different people. So the, the, the white zaddy was kind of disparaging black men throughout the whole thing, from what I understand. And she was sitting there agreeing with him. And from what I understand, the guy, he, people are saying he was a white supremacist or a suspected white supremacist, just denigrating black men in particular. And she was sitting there co-signing. Um, this white man and I heard my name came up and I don't know what the context was but I'm pretty sure it was something negative but the fact that she's still her and Zaddy are mentioning me um, you know of course Zaddy is going to be mad you know I got the number one documentary film going in on white supremacist culture so of course they're going to be mad there's a lot of white supremacists mad but when you have these bedwench mammies sitting up here co-signing them and now Cynthia, from what I understand, but she is took she she took a deep turn with the anti-black male hatred. I mean, she's going in on black males lately. I mean, she sounds like you know a Stephen from Django with a weave. Oh yeah, Cynthia is a pathological liar. I don't really take you can't take anything she says seriously. We don't really discuss her in a serious discourse. But I put up a. Um, I put up a video because she was mentioning me of different photographs of her bayang. I put up different images of her bayang. And I think, didn't she make another video? I think I heard she made another video about me today sometime. I didn't, again, I don't listen to Synthetic G. Let me see, and I'm, I'm trying to do all this while these mosquitoes are biting my ass out here. That's why I ain't gonna be out here too long. Let me, where's the video? of um, synthetic G. Let me let me play the video I bumped earlier showing different images of her bayang and the video went viral. Oh here it is. Let me let me play this video ladies and gentlemen. Just, just a little snippet of it and this kind of got her a little upset. Like oh why are we talking about her bayang again? Okay. Okay so this is Cynthia. Cynthia um this is we made a little dedication to you Cynthia. Hold on. Oh yeah Okay, so that's a little dedication to Cynthia. Now, this thing went viral. I didn't expect it to go viral. I just kind of put it up just on some clowning shit, you know. But the thing went viral. It's all over the place. It has thousands and thousands and thousands of views on several platforms. So, 
But again, Synthetic G, she's an infamous black man hater. This woman despises black men. This woman hates black men with a passion. She makes videos about black men all the time. And, you know, she makes videos about me all the time. And we know what it is. With Cynthia, and Cynthia, I know you're listening. Cynthia is upset because I wouldn't get with her. Cynthia wanted to be my side piece. Cynthia, I know you wanted to be my side piece, but I'm not with that. I'm not with that, Cynthia. And Cynthia is making all of these anti-black male videos, conquered men, black men are dusty beta males and all this old shit. And y'all, her, she's getting with all of the, the, the divest bedwinches, sitting up talking about how great Zaddy is and how Zaddy is, you know, y'all get raised up when you get around Zaddy. Zaddy increases your stock. Cynthia, Cynthia dear, let me talk to you, sweetie, because you broadcast over there. You're talking about how daddy, white daddy raises your value. And you, you've admitted, we, I play videos of you admitting that you lay it with white men and you kick it with white dudes and all that because you are a little, little funky bed wench. But listen, synthetic G, if white Zaddy is raising your value up so much, why are you broadcasting from a rent control studio apartment up there in Seattle? You got that little bitty ass funky studio apartment up there in Seattle, little rent control apartment with secondhand IKEA furniture. Wh where's Zaddy? I thought Zaddy was doing all these great things. How come Zaddy has not gotten you out of that that little struggle studio apartment that you live in? That's a very small apartment, Cynthia. That apartment looked like it smelled like singed hot comb smoke. It's a very small apartment, Cynthia. And Zaddy has not raised you up out of there. Why is that? I thought Zaddy did so many magical things, dear. What's going on? That little bitty ass apartment. I don't even think that shit has a kitchen. She has an electric hot plate and a George Foreman grill, and she used the George Foreman grill to heat up her hot comb. My God, uh, you, you, the struggle is real, Synthetic G. I mean, I thought Zaddy was supposed to be doing all these great things and the black man is the dusty beta male. <laughs> now, Cynthia, Cynthia, listen, I know you've been wanting to get with me. I can't get with you, Cynthia, but I, I, I try to make things happen for you. Now, at one point, I gave Cynthia money for a new bayang. I gave her some money for a new bayang. I know you're listening, Cynthia. I PayPal'd her. I PayPal'd her $100. I told her, look, step your game up, at least get you a new bayang. And I PayPal'd her $100, and she shamelessly took that $100. But instead of upgrading her bayang, her ignorant ass went and got a matching synthetic ponytail to go with the fucking bayang. Like, God damn, this is a raggedy bitch. So she done tricked off the money on some bullshit so Cynthia I know the struggle is real I know the struggle is real Cynthia yeah. <laughs> oh I know it's real Cynthia you're walking around you still got that mortuary makeup on <laughs> looking like a dead hoe from the 1800s who got reanimated and brought back to life you a century old hoe who died after the Civil War. <laughs> you got killed in the Civil War and they brought your ass back to life. <laughs> she was working at a hoe house in the 1800s <laughs> and got hit by a stray bullet during the Civil War. <laughs> and she got on the same mortuary makeup. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Come on, Cynthia. I know you love a nigga. I can't get with you, Cynthia. But Cynthia, look, at least Cynthia, with your fucked up bayang, at least branded, you should, Cynthia, what you should do, because I'm a very good person at marketing. I'm very good at marketing, Cynthia. What you can do, since your bayangs are clearly attached to those headbands you wear, you should come out 
with um, your own headband Bayang. Call it um, <laughs> Bayang Go Bye Bye. <laughs> so people who cannot, if you don't have time to put a lace front on, Put on a bay angle bye bye and just go on about your business. Just throw that shit on and go on about your damn business. I mean, market your shit. I mean, look, be creative. Your lace fronts and your bay yangs are clearly attached to them headbands. And if I were you, I would market that. Use that as a marketing strategy. That's a new thing. Just own up to it. Like, look. Bay ain't go bye bye is for the women on the go. That's what you need to do. No edges needed. We can do infomercials. Tired of fixing your hair to go to work in the morning? Get Bay ain't go bye bye. Just strap it on with the headband and leave the house. Thanks, Bay ain't go bye bye. That's what you should do. <sighs> but but Cynthia. Again, I, I sent her money to get a new Bayang. And I'm like, next time I just buy her a Bayang. I just have to buy it. But the problem is she keeps changing her hair color and it's hard to find Bayangs in the color she chooses. I think she has some kind of hookup overseas. She has all types of colors that Bayang colors that's not even out over here yet. She has a honey mustard Bayang, dirty auburn Bayang. <laughs> Midnight Magenta Bayang. Some of them shits. I went to Sally's Beauty Supply. They're like, we not have. We special order. <laughs> Do you know Cynthia G? They knew you by name. <laughs> oh, so you are familiar with those colors. <laughs> so yeah, you, you hooked up with a wholesaler somewhere in Malaysia. Where you can get those, those lace fronts. And those Bayangs in different colors. But, um, Cynthia, listen, Cynthia, listen, Cynthia has always been obsessed with me. I know you, I know you're watching Cynthia. Cynthia has always been extremely obsessed with me. She used to follow me, follow every word, but you know, she was campaigning to be my side piece. I don't want a side piece. I got my beautiful queen. And plus, even if I was going to get a side piece, Cynthia, it wouldn't be you. Sweetie. Your ass is too flat and your shoulders are too husky. Okay, you built like a transgender weightlifter. I can't get with you. You look like you're about to lift weights for the damn Olympics. You're gonna be lifting weights for Kenya or Ghana. You're gonna be <laughs> lifting weight for Africa <laughs> somewhere. You're gonna have on a kente cloth headband with your bayang strapped to the kente cloth. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm not trying to get with you, Cynthia, because, again, I don't want to hit that and that wig come off. We, I don't know what type of patches of hair you got under that damn wig. I know if your wig fall off, your scalp probably looks like kangaroo fur. I don't want to see what it looks like, sweetie. I don't want to see what it looks like. She, she wants to get with me. She, she really wants to get with me. I don't want her. And for somebody who has so much hatred for black men. How you hate black men so much and you look like a black man? God damn. <laughs> you hate niggas so much and you look like one. <laughs> How you, you, you know, you, you, you wanted me because I'm a strong black man, but the problem is you look like a strong black man too. So we, we would never work. It would never work, Cynthia. And you can't be a lesbian. You can't go that route because you can't be out here eating pussy with that synthetic bayang going down on a woman. You do that, you're going to fuck around and give somebody a urinary tract infection with them synthetic strands on your bayang. You can't do that, dear. You just will not get rid of that goddamn bayang. You've had that bayang for 30 years. I think I saw some school pictures of Cynthia G with that same fucking bayang in the fifth grade. And... She was wearing that bayang and the strands were coming loose and the other kids were tripping on the playground over her synthetic weave strands. You know them strands are very slippery. A little boy misplaced his hip. He had to get a pediatric hip replacement because he slipped on Cynthia G's wig strands in the fifth grade. Poor little fella. They had to, the school got sued because of your synthetic bayang, Cynthia. You understand? 
But Cynthia, I will not get with you, Cynthia. You keep. I'm not going. I'm not going to keep mentioning Cynthia. I'm not going to keep mentioning Cynthia. I'm not going to mention you, Cynthia. I'm just saying this, you know, because I I heard you and Zaddy was talking crap. But look, I'm out here vacationing, and I know you wish you were out here in Costa Rica vacationing with me too, Cynthia. I know you wish you were here. But that that would never work, Cynthia. Even if I even if I wanted you at my as my side piece, I couldn't bring you out here to Costa Rica. Not with that bayang strapped to that cheetah skin headband. A jaguar might think that you're an enemy and try to mate with you or something. I don't know. There's wild animals out here. I can't bring you out here with that that bayang sitting on your head, that funky wig sitting on your head, Cynthia. I can't bring you to the jungles of Costa Rica. <laughs> Yeah, some animals might think that a dead howler monkey fell on your scalp and they might attack both of us. I can't do that, Cynthia. That just wasn't, that, that, that wouldn't work for me. That wouldn't be conducive of the kind of relationship I want, dear. But, I, you know, whatever. Cynthia is always going to mention me because she, she wants daddy. She wants black daddy, but black daddy don't want her, so she has to go kiss up to white daddy. So... That's what it is. You know, the bedwinches are going to bedwinch and the bedwinches are going to babble. So I'm not even tripping on them. I'm not tripping on them. But anyway, listen, these, these bugs are whooping my ass out here, man. I got to take my ass back in the, in the room. But anyway, guys, um, I go live when I get back to the States. I'll be back in the States in a couple of days. Um, don't forget, guys, we're going to have that crowdfunding campaign pretty soon for the new Hidden History Museum. So y'all get ready for that. Also, Buck Breaking still the number one documentary in the world. Go to buckbreakingmovie.com. Buckbreakingmovie.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Y'all be safe.